हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट द हाइपरटेंसिव वैस्क्युलर डिजीज ओके इन हाइपरटेंसिव वैस्क्युलर डिजीज हियर द हाइपरटेंशन कैन बी वेन एवर देर इज इंक्रीज इन सिस्टॉलिक ब्लड प्रेशर और इंक्रीज इन डायस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर देन वी कॉल इट हाइपरटेंशन सो सस्टेन्ड इंक्रीज इन सिस्टॉलिक ब्लड प्रेशर अबाउ वन थर्टी नाइन मिलीमीटर्स ऑफ एच जी और सस्टेन्ड इंक्रीज इन डायस्टॉलिक ब्लड प्रेशर अबाउ एटी नाइन मिलीमीटर्स ऑफ एच जी इज कॉल्ड हैज हाइपर टेंशन दिस इज एक्चुअली एसोसिएटेड विथ एथिरोस्क्लिरोटिक डिजीज ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स इन द होल पॉपुलेशन सफर फ्रॉम हाइपर टेंशन सो द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन इज एक्चुअली इडियोपैथिक बट इफ यू वर आस्ड वॉट इज द मो अदर कॉजेस देर आर सम सेकेंडरी कॉजेस ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन दिस सेकेंडरी कॉजेस ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन कैन बी ड्यू टू द रिनल डिजीज और एड्रिनल डिजीज इन द एड्रिनल डिजीज इट कैन बी प्राइमरी एल्डोस्टिरोनिज्म और क्यूशिंग सिंड्रोम और फियोक्रोमोसाइटोमा In the renal disease, in the kidney, renal artery stenosis is other identifiable cause. Right? Then, in the primary or idiopathic hypertension, if you see, this hypertension is actually multifactorial, which is associated with genetic polymorphisms with interaction from environment. So, the hypertension actually increases with age. and whenever the hypertension increases what is hypertension it is the blood pressure which is present in the aorta in systole is systolic blood pressure when the blood pressure in the aorta increases now the ventricle now the uh, left ventricle has to see the the blood pressure in the aorta is increased as a result the blood pressure the as a result the left ventricle has to contract against higher pressure to pump the blood into the aorta so this left ventricle undergoes hypertrophy that is concentric hypertrophy that is there is increased smooth muscle cells are seen okay the it causes concentric hypertrophy is seen in these uh, uh, in the left ventricle right and slowly this concentric hypertrophy because of concentric hypertrophy there are increased muscle cells present in the left ventricle so these increased muscle cells will increase the oxygen demand but the oxygen which is received by the heart will be the same so as a result this this increases the chances of ischemia in the patient and it will progress to ischemic heart disease or congestive heart failure right so in the heart in the hypertension in all the patients of hypertension a small percentage as much as 5% of patients if they are untreated they might result this might result in death if untreated in 1 to 2 years this type of hypertension which we see is called as malignant hypertension what is this malignant hypertension in malignant hypertension systolic blood pressure will be more than 200 mm of hg whereas the diastolic blood pressure will be more than 120 mm of hg so this is about the malignant blood pressure okay so this malignant blood pressure is also associated with renal failure and it is also associated with retinal hemorrhages also right so now we will learn about the blood pressure regulation so in the regulation of blood pressure first this is the heart from the left ventricle the blood that is pumped by the heart from the left ventricle in one heart beat is called as stroke volume heart rate is the number of beats that the heart 
नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स दैट द हार्ट बीट्स इन वन मिनट इज हार्ट रेट so if you multiply stroke volume into heart rate we get cardiac output this cardiac output is the amount of blood that the heart pumps in 1 minute that is cardiac output into heart rate we get sorry stroke volume into heart rate we get cardiac output so the most important determinants of the stroke volume is filling pressure right so um so how much amount of heart that is filled here this is the this blood is the one that is de that is a uh, important determinant for this stroke volume so next important thing is myocardial contractility and heart rate are second factors which are affecting the stroke volume so one stroke volume is affected by the filling pressure which is called as preload okay whereas second stroke volume is also affected by the heart rate and myocardial contractility actually not heart rate it is myocardial contractility for example the contraction of the heart is more that is if the heart contracts with higher pressure then obviously the stroke volume will be more right so the uh, this stroke volume depends upon the preload and myocardial contractility this myocardial contractility is regulated by alpha and beta adrenergic receptors this is one thing that happens in the heart second if you see the peripheral system in the peripheral system that is at the level of uh, arteries sorry arterioles in the peripheral system the tone of the arteries is responsible for diastolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure is the peripheral resistance okay so if you see the peripheral resistance or the peripheral uh, peripheral resistance of the arterioles is mediated by two things we have vasoconstrictors and vasodilators vasoconstrictors will constrict the artery and increase the blood pressure whereas vasodilators will dilate the artery and decrease the blood pressure these vasoconstrictors include angiotensin 2 catecholamines and endothelin whereas these vasodilators include kinins prostaglandins and nitric oxide right so sometimes whenever there is um increased blood flow to protect the blood vessels from hyperperfusion the blood vessels undergo vasoconstriction sometimes whenever there is ischemia to the organ system then the blood vessels undergo vasodilatation so that is the normal regulation that occurs in our body then if you see some points about kidney now if you see the kidney will filter around 170 liters of the plasma containing almost 23 moles of salt daily okay now typically the daily diet uh, daily uh, in our diet we have in the diet we have 100 milli equivalents of sodium and 99.5% of filtered salt is present in our diet and about 98% of sodium is reabsorbed actively by the sodium transporters right the remaining small 2% of the sodium which is present is reabsorbed by epithelial sodium channel this epithelial sodium channel is regulated by renin angiotensin aldosterone system so if you see the whole kidney will filter almost 170 liters of water plasma which contains almost 23 moles of salt daily and we in our diet contain 100 eat eat almost 100 milli equivalent of sodium 99% of 99.5% of filtered salt is absorbed in that almost 98% of filtered sodium is reabsorbed and the remaining 
टू परसेंट एब्जॉर्बन इज बाई एपिथीलियल सोडियम चैनल्स विच इज रेगुलेटेड बाई रेन इन एंजियोटेंसिन एल्डोस्टिर सिस्टम सो वी विल सी इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट रेन इन एंजियोटेंसिन एल्डोस्टिर सिस्टम फर्स्ट किडनी किडनी प्रोड्यूस रेन इन किडनी एक्सपेशली द जक्स्टा ग्लोमरुलर सेल्स विच आर द माइओ एपिथीलियल सेल्स सराउंडिंग द अफरेंट आर्टीरियोल्स द अफरेंट ग्लोमरुलर Glomerular afferent arterioles are surrounded by myoepithelial cells which produce renin. This renin is released in response to low blood pressure. Whenever there is decreased blood pressure, kidneys get activated. The JJ cells will produce the renin. This renin is released in the afferent arterioles. Whenever there is low blood pressure or whenever there is high levels of catecholamines present in our body or if there is low sodium in the distal convoluted tubule due to all these renin is released. Now this renin will con will it will break down the angiotensin nogen. There is angiotensin nogen tensinogen which is present in the plasma this angiotensinogen is produced from the liver liver produces angiotensinogen this angiotensinogen is cleaved to angiotensin 1 by the renin this angiotensin 1 in the presence of angiotensin converting enzyme which is produced from the lungs okay this angiotensin converting enzyme will cleave the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 now this angiotensin 2 will activate it will first activate the adrenal gland and this adrenal gland will produce aldosterone okay this aldosterone will increase the sodium reabsorption and thus increases the blood pressure this angiotensin 2 also causes vasoconstriction and thus increases the blood pressure overall the blood pressure has been increased then we also have some myocardial neuritic peptide sorry neuro natriuretic peptides we have myocardial natriuretic peptides which are atrial natriuretic peptide and ventricular natriuretic peptide which are produced by atrium atrial myocardium and ventricular myocardium these are produced in response to volume expansion so these atrial natriuretic peptide and ventricular natriuretic peptide will inhibit the sodium resorption from distal convol distal renal tubules and thus these will lead to sodium excretion and diuresis these will lead to sodium excretion and diuresis so these are important points about the blood pressure regulation now after blood pressure regulation now let us now learn about the pathogenesis of hypertension so if you see the pathogenesis of hypertension as i have already said most maximum amount of sorry maximum types of hypertension sorry maximum most common cause of hypertension is idiopathic so we will mainly see the pathogenesis of secondary hypertension pathogenesis of secondary hypertension first renal causes in that we have renal artery stenosis in renal artery stenosis there is decreased glomerular blood flow and as a result there is decreased pressure in the afferent arteriole and because of this decreased glomerular blood flow and decreased pressure in the afferent arteriole these will result in release of renin and finally with renin angiotensin aldosterone system it causes vasoconstriction and by aldosterone causing increased sodium reabsorption it will increase the blood pressure then the next cause is gene defects involved in aldosterone metabolism there are certain gene defects like 11 beta hydroxylase defect or uh, 17 alpha hydroxylase defect or aldosterone synthesis okay all these defects can result in increased secretion of aldose <coughs> increased secretion of aldosterone 
which causes increased sodium and water reabsorption thus increasing the blood pressure even if there is primary hyperaldosteronism is also one of the cause of secondary hypertension then if there are any mutations which are involved in sodium reabsorption that is we have a syndrome called as liddell syndrome where there is defect in the epithelial sodium channel so this here there is gain of function mutation of epithelial sodium channel is present so this will lead to increased absorption of sodium which will cause hypertension then we also have some genetic defects in the genetic defects we have single gene defects are also present which will which are actually rarer forms of hypertension then these are secondary hypertension now we will see the causes of essential hypertension in the essential or primary hypertension it can occur due to some vasoconstrictive influences or that is if there are some vasoconstrictors which will cause vasoconstriction of vessels or it can be due to environmental factors which include stress obesity smoking heavy salt consumption physical inactivity or it can also include genetic factors like single gene disorders or polymorphisms or of several genes or it can also include reduced sodium excretion um this reduced sodium excretion can also increase the fluid volume or it can increase the cardiac output thus elevating the blood pressure so these are the main um, things involved in pathogenesis of hypertension now if you see the morphology of hypertension we have two types of uh, things that can occur one we have hyaline arteriosclerosis in hyaline arteriosclerosis there is homogeneous thickening of the sorry i will just um, use this yeah there is homogeneous thickening of the vessel occurs in hyaline arteriosclerosis this homogeneous thickening will result in narrowing of the lumen these changes will reflect both protein plasma protein leakage across the endothelial cells and also the smooth muscle matrix so this is actually seen in this is seen in benign hypertension okay and these are also seen in diabetic microangiopathy okay this is hyaline arteriosclerosis then we have hyperplastic arteriosclerosis these hyperplastic arteriosclerosis these are laminated thickening of blood vessel concentric thickening of blood vessel is seen which shows onion skin appearance and this is seen in malignant hypertension and sometimes you will also see presence of fibrinoid necrosis and is also seen and this is called as necrotizing arteriolitis so this is about the hypertension in pathology thank you for watching